Hey everybody, Bungsy here with another ultralight review on ultralight backpacking. I'm wrapping up what turned out to be a mini series of sorts on backpacking shoes. Video number one was a rant about ultra once again jacking with their fit and how they have now gone too far. Link up above. Uh, in video number two, I introduce you guys to a great ultra-like alternative, a small company called Topo Athletic. Uh, check that video out as well if you haven't already, link up above. Today, I have a quick intro to another shoe company with a trail runner line, namely Hoka. Um, I've been asked a few times what I think about Hoka, so here we are. First off, please keep in mind that the little-footed forest elves among us can wear pretty much any shoes. So this review is more suited or meaningful to those with human-sized feet. Feet that prefer a broad platform with room to spread out like they were designed to. Um, in other words, what Ultra used to be and no longer is, since they jumped the shark uh, after being acquired by North Face, uh, the North Face parent. So let's talk Hoka. Um, when everyone a few years ago was going ultra minimalist, those super thin shoes, you guys remember that craze? Um, these guys, Hoka, went the complete opposite direction and made the cushiest, fattest shoes on the planet. Um, they were trailblazers at that time. For instance, this isn't even their thickest. <laughs> so what about using them for backpacking? First off, let's talk fit. Um, they have about a dozen models within their trail running family alone, quite a few. Uh, I would describe all of them, though, um, as being more along the lines of the traditional narrow running shoe. Uh, too narrow, again, if you're looking for something more akin to Ultra. However, one of those models does come in wide sizes and has a legit outdoor sole, namely their Speed Goat 4s. Um, so again, only option with wide, and it does have a decent uh, sole. Is it as wide and roomy as the uh, Topo Athletic shoes or the old Ultras? No, but it is uh, roomier than pretty much any other standard running shoe. So besides fit, what's not to like? I'll get to it, but we first need to quickly dis discuss stack or the thickness of the footbed to properly understand this problem. The Speed Goat has a stack height of 32 millimeters, compared to the stack thickness of the comparable Ultra Temps at 29 millimeters and the comparable Topo Athletics, such as this, at 30 millimeters. So you can see there's a difference. Um, so it's a little taller than the alternatives, but not a dramatic amount. This is a thick shoe too. So why is this a problem? Well, it's not a problem until things go wrong. It's not a problem until you're daydreaming about food and mile 15 of a 20 plus mile day with 100 more to go until you get back to civilization and accidentally step on a small rock because you're not paying attention. And guess what? That rock's dead set on turning your ankle, if not worse. The higher you are off the ground, which is measurable as the stack height, the further you have to fall um, as your ankle rolls and the worse the sprain. Compounding this issue, and this is where the real problem hides in plain sight with Hoka's, is that the Speed Goat heel, heels are, are really soft around the edges. There's zero stability control as compared to this, as you can see the stability control. Um, when your ankle starts rolling on this guy outwards as you step on a rock, the Speed Goat heel is going to give out completely. Think of this as a mattress. Have you ever slept on a mattress that has no edge control? You know, as you inch closer to the uh, near the edge of the mattress, the edge just gives out completely and you hit the ground. Um, with a good mattress, you can sleep right on the edge and it will not give away, even if the mattress is super soft. With other shoes like Ultra and Topo Athletic, no matter how thick and squishy their stacks are, um, they make sure their heels are buttressed around the edge to prevent this very... Uh, uh, nightmare from occurring. This isn't just a different color. These are different materials. You step on a rock um, that wants to roll your ankle and the heel's edge will not counter this. Not with Hoka's. Just simply add a better tread. And as most of you know, there is uh, more to effective trail running shoes than just tread. You need far more stability control when on a, running on a trail than on road. 
For me, this is a deal killer. I don't care how uh, cushy and comfortable the shoe is. And there's no question, Hoka's are little clouds, as you can see. The combination, though, of their over-the-top cushioning and lack of outward stability control is a very serious disaster waiting to happen. Now, there are other differences, but I don't want to bury the lead. The above is why I reluctantly don't use Hoka's and why I uh, thought it was a good idea to put this video out there. Um, I'm hoping to save one or two of you from learning this the hard way in the middle of absolutely nowhere with a sprained ankle or even worse. Um, again, again, I get why people love Hoka's, no argument, but there's a cost to this that I want folks to be aware of. Well, that's all the time I need and I hope I gave you something to think about. As always, please help me grow the show by hitting the like button and clicking on the Bungsy logo footing on the screen to subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me a ton. Thanks, and I'll catch you on my next ultralight review on ultralight backpacking.